क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू हैव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हाउ एक्चुअली वी कैन फिल्टर आउट द इमेजेस व्हाट आर द स्टेप्स सो दैट वी कैन हैव द फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन फिल्टरिंग दिस इज वेरी वेरी नेसेसरी टू हैव द इमेज एनहांसमेंट इनटू द फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन वी हैव ऑलरेडी गोन थ्रू द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ व्हाट एक्चुअली द फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन as we take the help of fourier transform a very potential tool that switches us from spatial domain to this special the frequency domain so let us begin with the topic frequency domain filtering to talk about frequency domain filtering we must recall the definition or the understanding of the frequency domain so the frequency domain is actually nothing more than the space defined by the values of the fourier transform and its frequency variables represented by u comma v here the filtering in the frequency domain is really very very straight forward the steps we can list out here it consists of the steps like the very first step to have multiplication of the input image by minus 1 to the power x plus y to center the transform next we shall be having the computation of f of uv the dft of the image that is discrete fourier transform the direct transformation shall get us switch from spatial domain to the frequency domain then we shall be having the next step by the multiplication of f of uv by a filter function h of uv so these two one will be having a multiplication into the frequency domain next we shall be having a computation of the inverse dft of the above result that we have obtained into the step number 3 we can say it will be followed by obtaining the real part of the result obtained into the fourth step that is computation of inverse dft of the above result so while programming we shall be using the absolute as the syntax to get the inverse fourier transform by the syntax i f52 for the two dimensional signal now we can have the last step that is multiplication of the above result by minus 1 to the power of to the power x plus y here so these the step just now we have discussed we can uh, recall with the help of the block diagram so here we can start from this side so here we have f of xy representing the input image before going to have the filtering operation into the frequency domain we may require certain kind of pre processing so after pre processing now we can apply the fourier transform to it so for f of xy representation into the spatial domain after fourier transform we can represent the image f of uv now we have the filter function now we have the filter function h of uv so here after having the processing with the filter function we shall be having a simple product into the frequency domain so h of uv frequency domain representation f of uv is also frequency domain representation generally for the image we will be having them into the matrix form so coefficient to coefficient the product shall be carried out so after that we can say that the resultant matrix is the filtered image but it is still in the frequency domain Hence, we require to take the help of inverse Fourier transform. We shall get the result back to the spatial domain. Hence, we can get the visualization and a proper display of the filtered image. Next, we can have a simple post processing to get it further displayed, and we can represent the resultant image, the filtered one, G of X Y. Here, the motive is to have the filtering into the frequency domain to get the better visual. quality of the image with respect to human vision perception hence it is a method of image enhancement we shall say that the resultant image will be enhanced image the term filter function h of uv that we encounter in this middle block we can talk h of uv is called a filter or sometimes filter transfer function because it actually suppresses certain frequencies into the transform while leaving the others unchanged so here i must say that whatever the spatial domain image as a sample we provide to this direct formulation of the fourier transform we obtain its spectral components so few of the spectral components are passed and few of the components are 
suppressed by this filter function hence simply a filter or filter transfer function we can say and the filtered image we obtain onto the right hand side the basic model just now we have shown with the help of log diagram shall be representing g of uv the filtered image into the frequency domain representing u and v here will be a simply a product of h of uv f of uv here f of uv we have already discussed a fourier transform of the image being filtered that is the input image and h of uv is the filter transform function now there are two things that we obtain by the use of filtering either in the spatial domain filtering or in the frequency domain filtering that are smoothing and that are sharpening so smoothing is actually achieved in the frequency domain by dropping out the higher frequency components so we can say simply low pass filtering whereas the sharpening or sometimes it is also referred to as edge detection that is obtained by passing the high frequency components and dropping the low frequency components so simply the two types of filters here we can make that is low pass filters and high pass filters low pass filters only pass the low frequencies and drop the high ones whereas high pass filters only pass the frequencies above a minimum value so here for the input image of this particular type we can say that the application of low pass filtering shall give a smoothening that we can see in this particular image this image is the smooth version of the original image on to the left hand side whereas this image is actually the edge detection or sharp version of the original image the low pass filter transfer function in three dimension here we can represent with the axis u v and the amplitude axis here so it is having a upward curvature of this particular type and for the high pass filtering we shall be having it on to the opposite that is downward sides here so again we have the dimensions represented by u v and the amplitude here it is the location of the origin at the intersection of this particular axis further the low pass filtering shall be categorized into ideal low pass filtering the gaussian type of low pass filtering and butterworth type of low pass filtering similarly high pass filtering can also be categorized into ideal high pass filtering the gaussian type of high pass filtering and butterworth type of high pass filtering now we have some hints for filtering purpose so the first hint is if you are working with the color images these are usually converted to the gray level images gray scale images we sometimes refer so this should be done before filtering because the fact is that the information about the structure of the image is actually represented in the luminous component luminous means the intensity component so intensities are actually preserved as we switch from the color image to the gray scale images images are usually stored as unsigned integers some operations could require the explicit cast to double or float for being implemented and lastly we can say that the filtered image in general consists of the double values so a cast to unsigned integer could be required before saving it in a file using a predefined format so i hope you have understood what exactly the filtering process is there if you are working into the frequency domain by the next lecture we shall be having a simple matlab program demonstration to show you generating a frequency response so if you like the videos and want to have some more information on to the digital image processing you can subscribe to ekida channel thank you